What's up, FHS? Welcome back to the Sabre Roar. Anna Samer. Y me llamo Gabriel. This week, we get ready for Culture Fest, which is taking place on February 15th. We'll be exploring culture as we talk about Black History Month, address some common cultural misconceptions, take a look at FHS students' cultures, and look at some food from around the world. Make sure to stay tuned until the end to hear about this upcoming exciting event. But first, let's highlight the Franklin wrestling team that took on New Berlin at home a few weeks ago. Let's take a look and see how they did. The Franklin wrestling team took on New Berlin at home on January 10th with high expectations as always. Um, so coming into the dual meet against New Berlin, uh, we obviously expected our guys to perform. They exceeded our expectations. Uh, New Berlin's a tough team. They did have a lot of seniors last year, so we weren't positive uh, how close the meet would be, but we were definitely prepared for a tough, hard-fought meet. But they are constantly looking to improve during their matches with the support of coaches on the sideline. We're always looking at ways that they can improve. We can kind of analyze their match with them, tell them, oh, you did this little thing that you can fix um, so that they don't end up giving up points in a situation where they can't allow points and still win the match at the end of the season when it counts the most. However, the Franklin wrestling team has a lot to look forward to in the future with opportunities ahead of them. Our conference season is over. We ended up going undefeated and winning the conference dual title. Um, after that, it's just all tournaments. Starting um, next weekend, uh, the varsity has conference and regionals and sectionals, and then hopefully we have a good group of guys make it to state this year. Congratulations to the wrestling team, and best of luck as always. This month is February, also Black History Month. Now let's take a look at how African Americans have had an impact on our society throughout the entertainment industry. One of the large aspects of entertainment that African Americans have excelled and played a huge role in is the music industry. For example, African Americans created these genres of music. Blues, jazz, rap, hip hop, rock, R&B, and reggae. So when I think you think about like the impact of African Americans in pop culture, there really wouldn't be American pop culture um, without, especially if you think about like music, I think that's the most quintessential example, like there would be not a lot of the music we know and appreciate today without the influence of black artists. Here are some of the top African American singers of all time. Aretha Franklin, Michael Jackson, James Brown, Prince, and Beyonce. One of the African Americans that has inspired me the most and has a big impact on me that's in the entertainment industry would have to be Lauryn Hill. She's an amazing black woman that has had so many nominations for so many awards um, in the music industry and being the first of her kind to also get those nominations and awards has inspired me a lot throughout my life and um, inspired me to become the first of my kind to do things as well. African Americans have not only impacted the music side of entertainment, but also the performance side. Here are the top five African American actors and actresses of our time that you may have seen on a TV or movie theater screen before. Morgan Freeman, Denzel Washington, Samuel L. Jackson, Will Smith, James Earl Jones, Haley Berry, Octavia Spencer, Angela Bassett, Viola Davis, and Zendaya Coleman. Now, let's look at two specific actors' stories and their achievements. Morgan Freeman is an American actor, director, and narrator. He won an Academy Award in 2005 for Best Supporting Actor in the movie Million Dollar Baby and has had a great influence on the entertainment industry. Viola Davis is an American actress and producer. She graduated from Juilliard in 1993 and began her career on stage before film. She won a SAG Award in 2017 for her performance in Fences and will continue to inspire in the industry. Last but not least, let's look into dance. A specific African American dancer that has had a huge impact is Missy Copeland. She has paved the way for ballet dancers and choreographers to pay attention to opportunities and minority representation in ballet companies. She became the first ever African American woman to become a principal dancer, which is the highest position in a ballet company at an American ballet theater. In 2021, she funded the Misty Copeland Foundation, which seeks to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in dance 
primarily ballet. This is how African Americans have had an impact on our society through the entertainment industry. Thanks for educating us on Black History Month. Many high schools don't require a credit regarding geography and culture, making cultural misconceptions ever so present. Okay, so what people don't understand is the fact that the Middle East is in Asia. People just think it's like its own little location, but it's actually just, it's just the middle of it. It's actually in Asia. I'm Josiah, and many people say that Africa is a country, but it's not because it's a continent. I'm Palestinian, and a lot of people mistake Pakistan and Palestine because they have very, very similar wording. But in reality, Pakistan is next to India, and Palestine is in the Middle East. A lot of people think that I speak Indian, but that's like not a language. And I speak Urdu, that's the actual language. So people ask me why I wear the hijab, and people have like a misconception that it's like forced upon me, when really I chose to wear it, and it just shows like modesty and who I am, and it like represents Islam. Um, a lot of people think that all Chinese people speak Mandarin, but like for instance, I speak Cantonese, which is a dialect of Chinese, and Mandarin is also a dialect. It's just the most widely spoken. So I think a common misconception with Poland is that a lot of people tend to forget that it was um, controlled by Russia for like a, the longest time. It was only very recently that they actually gained their independence. So like a lot of the culture differs heavily from like a lot of the other European countries like Germany, uh, Britain and stuff like that. I'm from South Korea and many people think that North Koreans and South Koreans have the same ethnicity but we don't. I'm from Egypt and a misconception is that Egypt isn't in Africa. Being Hispanic doesn't mean being Mexican. Being Hispanic means you're from a Spanish-speaking country. I'm from the Philippines and it's part of Asia and a lot of people think that Asians only eat rice but it's more of like a staple food. Both from uh, Palestine. And a uh, misconception is that everyone thinks that Palestine and Jordan are the same flag. As a mixed race person, a common misconception is that most of the time if you're mixed race, you're, usu you're usually white and black. But me personally, my mom is Mexican and my dad is African American, so it just kind of shows that there are more diversities when it comes to multiracial. I'm from India and a lot of people think that India isn't in Asia, but it is. A common misconception about Europeans is that we don't celebrate our culture enough, but I'm Polish and one of the many cultural um, things that I do is I have a big dinner before uh, Christmas called Vigilia as well as other culture di cultural traditions. It's important to normalize fixing the mistakes we make about geography and all cultures. Even without the credit required, make sure to expand your global knowledge every day, Sabres. Let's dive into the unique backgrounds of FHS students and check out the awesome traditions from around the world. So my name is Natalie and I'm half Puerto Rican, half Guatemalan. My name is Sofia Alberti and I'm a third generation Sicilian American. My name is Brielle and I'm from Cote d'Ivoire. I'm Samar Handen and I'm from Palestine. I'm Maria and I'm from Ukraine. My name's Sofia and I'm South Korean and Mongolian and French. Um, something that we do in my Puerto Rican culture is that we celebrate um, Tres Reyes, which is we celebrate on the 6th. I think a big part of my culture is like big family gatherings and a big part of that is food. So at like every gathering we have staple dishes, there's a lot of dessert, cannoli and gelato. In Palestine, we fast for Ramadan. Fun fact about my country is that we're really big on food and um, we use fried plantains called a local as a side juice, as well as pandan yam, which is well known as fufu. Fun fact about Ukraine, we do have Angel's Day. So for example, my Angel's Day is 25 times per year. What a fun variety of celebrations and traditions. It's always wonderful to discover the diverse lifestyles our students at Franklin bring to the community. There are a lot of cultures from around the world with different types of food, and these foods have different cultural significance for each. Let's take a look at what these foods mean to students here at FHS. Golgape, it originated in Pakistan, but now after the partition, it got moved to India, Punjab, which is now popular all over Punjab and India. Um, the importance of the food to us is that it's, it's, a, it's a quick snack that you can grab. Um, it's a street food, so you can go out with your family at night or with your friends after around seven. And um, you can just 
spend time with them and grab a quick snack while you're just catching up on stuff. Um, an important food in my culture is kimchi. Kimchi is just like kind of a food that people would ferment just to save for over the winter because in Korea there weren't a lot of like food in the winter. But um, it was just, it's a meal that I eat with all of my family and it's kind of like a staple meal that comes in every kind of like dinner, breakfast, lunch and all that stuff. An important food from one of my cultures would have to be hoska. Hoska is a sweet bread generally eaten around Christmas time. For my family at least, it, like buying it and stuff brings out happy memories of going to Illinois together to go to a restaurant and also a bakery to buy cookies and hoska. Green bean casserole because my grandma likes to make it and it's there for every holiday like Easter, Thanksgiving and all that. So, and uh, cornbread. Cornbread's pretty good too. These foods look so good and mean a lot to the communities. All that food sure made me hungry. You're in luck because Culture Fest is next week. All right, Culture Fest is taking place on February 15th from 5 to 8 p.m. At the Saber Center and Cafeteria. Come enjoy food, performances, activities, booths, and more. And it's for free? Make sure to come and bring your families because it is a culture celebration and everyone is invited. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any suggestions for what you would like to see on the Saber Roar, scan this QR code. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at the Saber Roar to stay up to date with all things Saber Roar. We'll see you next week, Sabers. Adios.